polymorphism is one of the other um, pillars of object-oriented programming. Poly means many, right, or many forms. Morph is change. So you can change into many forms. So there are two types of polymorphism in object-oriented programming. One type is what we call this um, a method overload. This is by having this kind of property. You have the same function name and different signature, okay? Signature means like the parameters. So in Python, it does not have this feature by default. If you want to create it yourself, you can. It's a little bit difficult to do it, but it can be done. It's not as efficient. And the reason why is because, you know, it's a loosely tab language. It's a dynamic tab language. You cannot have a unique a signature. Uh, but you need signature, that means something like this. So if I have a function called, say, hi, this one here has no parameter. I have another function called, say, hi, same name, different signature. You can see I have three functions in here. So same name, different signatures. This will work in Java and you know, C Sharp and so forth. Python and JavaScript, no, because you know the number of parameters, they have to be of different type. So if this is like an integer, and, and if I have here like a, a B, and B could be a, a string, well, it doesn't matter because you know in Python, A can be an integer or any type, same thing with B, so therefore they are not unique, right? Unique means the unique data type. If you put it this way, then yeah, it's, it's a little bit unique because I have one argument versus two. Well, we just, I just showed you that there is an argument called SAR. That will take any size of arguments. As you can see how this can be a problem, right? So it doesn't work. So just so you can see, same function, different arguments, then that is called a method overload. You're overloading that method. And how do you know which one to use is dependent on when you call it, like say hi. If I don't pass anything to that function, then I'm calling this one here. If I pass only one argument, it's gonna call this. If I pass you know, two and then so on, right? That's the idea behind overloading a method. And usually overload the methods here, these methods or functions must be inside the same class. So all of these, for example, if they're all inside the same class here, then you know they will be considered as method overload. But of course, it doesn't work in Python this way. So I'm just showing you here what it will look like, but it doesn't work, okay? I mean, it will still work. I'm not saying that it would error out, it won't. The only thing is that if you do this way, Python will only call the last one. If you have 10 of them, even though they are you know, coded differently, Python will only calls the last one if it finds. Okay, so you will ignore all of these here. So that is method overload. We're not gonna do any method overloading in Python, um, not efficient in, in here. So I'll put here, it's like none by default. Okay, so Python doesn't have it. The other type which we'll use is called method override. Okay, this one here, same method name, same signature. And here, uh, same method must exist in both parent and child classes. Okay, so you can see that overload here, I put here also C, uh, must be in same class only. Okay, that is usually the uh, way how method overload works. They must be in the same class. Here, overriding, one must be in the parent, one must be in the child class. Like I showed you earlier about this function here. In the object class, there is a function called under under a rep and under a string. These are method methods that I'm overriding because I can change the way that the parent you know, uses its own implementation. So I'm overriding the parent's function. That's what it means. So here, and we will do that in this example. So here's the pet class, the super class. I'm going to define a function. Let's call it talk, I guess, okay? 
I'll put here just some gibberish. If the animal is not a dog or a cat, it will talk something like that. So in this case, if I try to access both of these cat and dog, they don't have the function called talk, but the parent has it. So therefore they can access this function here. So I run it now. Okay, if I try to go in dog, that talk, you see that it points that, cat, that talk, it does it say the same thing, right? But for a dog, we know the dog bark and the cat meows, right? So that is a perfect example of a method override. I can override the function here inside the dog class. So right in here, I will copy the exact same one and it has to be exactly the same one, okay? Same name, a different implementation, right? That's a dog. And the same for the cat. I copy this and put inside the cat class down here. And this would be like meow. Okay, let's save this and run. All right, so I do dog talk. You will see that it uses its internal function and not the parent's function talk. It's the same thing with cat. Okay, if I have a pet down here, let's copy one, put pet. So we know that dog and cat talks those, but if I do pet.talk, it will do that. 